What was your reaction when Tupac finally got bailed out and signed with Death Row? How did I feel? Yeah, yeah. Like, what was your reaction? Uh, to I was happy for him. He needed to get out of there because that place was, you know, kind of like eating away at, at the goodness in him. He was kind of turning like bitter and, you know, that was not a good experience. Jail is not a good experience for anybody. It doesn't rehabilitate people. And especially when you didn't commit the crime. So I started, like I said, I, I knew him from the beginning of his fame starting to right before he passed. And he was changing, you know, he wasn't the same. Um, those experiences started to make him cold. Who knows, you know, that, that, that really traumatized him and, and, and it was something that really hurt him. I met Ayanna Jackson in the sixth grade and she tried to turn me bitter. Blessings to everyone on today. I hope that you're feeling blessed and highly favored. Um, starting off, starting off. So just a bit of a background before we actually jump into things. So Justin was actually, prior to this point, I was raised on the south side of Charlotte. So I, my, my stomping ground was um, before we moved to Arrowwood, because that was our first house. But before we moved to Arrowwood, I stayed uh, Woodline and these uh, apartments called Emerald Bay. I'm not sure if they still there or not, but it was me, my mother, my grandmother, and my uncle who was a quadriplegic. And so uh, my father, he was he was away for a little second doing a little bit. He came home later when we moved into uh, our house in, on Arrowwood. So he came home when I was probably like seven, seven or eight. And uh, but before this time, it's uh, it's just me, my mother my grandmother and my uncle. Now, I say this to you because um, prior to this point in sixth grade, I felt every woman in the world loved me. You know, I came from a very tender love. You know, my grandmother, she loved me so much. You know, uh, my earliest memories of I mean, in general, just of her taking care of me, just, uh, you know, wiping the cold out my eye making breakfast for me in the morning, you know, putting my clothes on for me, getting me ready for, you know, preschool, things like this, you know. Um, these are just my earliest memories. So prior to this point, I felt every woman loved me. Uh, you know, of course my mother, you know, I'm my only child, so she definitely loved me to death. And um, even teachers that I would have, you know, uh, whether that would be a Caucasian or black woman, whatever may have you. Um, I just always had, I guess, a certain trauma about me to where I never, I was always treated well for women. And so, um, at, for something like this to occur, which I'm about to go into, um, it definitely was startling to say the least. And so, um, around sixth grade, actually, you know, my, uh, my mom and dad, they, they come together um, they felt, you know, they was they was doing a look good. You know, my mama, she from Gritown, um, you dig? And so um, she really, that was one of her goals and dreams in life was to just have that, you know, that big old house on the hill, you know? So we, um, she down there liquidated <laughs> her 401k so we could down there move to Ballantyne and uh, definitely had a nice, nice crib, um, you know, but at this particular age, I'm not even really knowing what this keeping up with the Jones status type of stuff mean. The only thing I know is that she done snatched me away from all my friends. I'm over here flourishing. You know, I already got my set of compadres and homeboys who, you know, I'm ready to take off on this journey with. And she just uprooted me and I didn't know why. And uh, so we go over here to Ballantyne and the uh, middle school that I went to, we was only there for two years. Uh, but the, I think, I, oh no, I was in fifth grade and then sixth grade there. So in fifth grade, I went to Hawk Ridge Elementary. And then in uh, sixth grade, I went to uh, South Charlotte Middle School. Now at this particular middle school, of course, it, it being in a, a, a fluent area of Charlotte, 
man, it, it couldn't have been no more than like 10, 15 black kids at this school. Um, only three that was in close proximity to me. Like uh, they rode the bus or that I could reach out to or, you know, go see and things like that. But we're the minority to say the least. And so um, now uh, in the class, there is a young nappy headed girl, um, no breast, no booty. Just an ashy looking motherfucker, you know what I mean? Just nothing that I would ever aspire to talk to. I've always been a picky, a classy, upper echelon man. And so uh, it just was what it was. So this is somebody who I never paid any mind to. Nothing like that. Never looked at her in that light. Never considered her. And I, her, you know, it just was what it was. But um, needless to say, at this particular school, um, just me growing up, I wasn't always aware of who I was, you know. So I, as far as acceptance and thing, you dropped me off at this this white folks school, but I'm still Justin. I still come from where I come from, you know what I mean? So it's like I'm over here bad as hell, you know. I'm over here. I'm always in the, the, uh, the you know, the little assistant principal's office. I'm always down there getting kicked off the bus because they got, you know, white folks got all these tight rules, man. So they want you sitting down on the bus you know, once you have talking this, that, and the third, you know, so it just was what it was. It was very structured there as opposed to, you know, other schools where you would be more prone to disorder. So anyways, um, the one day, um, you know, I, I get called into the office and I'm not really sure why. Um, and prior to this, well, before I say that, let me go ahead and get to the principal's office because, you know, um, you know, these white folks, they love, they used to love, like, punishing me for whatever reason, playing all type of little mind games with me and shit. So they kind of prep you for the police, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> with how they treat you. So she called me in the office there and they're doing a little interrogation and shit, you know? So she, okay, uh, do you have any idea why? Like, it's bringing her joy to say this to me. Do you don't have any idea why you're, why you're here today? I'm damn near thinking I'm here to get a prize. How she's saying it, you know, but... Obviously, I know if I'm in your office, woman, ain't nothing good going on, you know? So, um, it ended up, I'm thinking, she got me playing the guessing game. I'm like, all right, well, I mean, is it a, another bus citation? W what's going on? So, she said, no, it's a little bit more serious than that. She goes, you, um, do you recall... Um, a young woman named Morgan, and I'm, I'm not gonna say her last name, but I remember it very, very well. Um, I never forget you as long as I, I live. So God be jazz. But uh, I said, I say, I mean, what about it? You know. Uh, and as she's saying this, it's now coming back to my recollection, like that this nappy head girl that I hadn't been paying any mind to over the past six seven eight months of me being at this school um just a few days prior to that for like the past, it was it it was like a three-day thing like to where she was getting the papers and she had i remember like she had two other white girls that was surrounding her and they like i could feel the energy i've always been sensitive to the spirit but i'm like i ain't know what was going on like you feel me because i'm like we not like that you feel me so i Ain't none of this even crossing my mind. So it ended up, she, um, they congregated around and they take three days to write out all this mumbo jumbo and bullshit. And so I get up in this office now it's done culminated. So this is all coming to me as she telling me what's going on and she reading off of these accusations. And so I'm, uh, I'm listening and this young African-American girl Nothing conspired against her fellow black man to tell lies and to say that a nigga was in here squeezing on her booty and breast, which she had neither one of at the time. Um, the only thing that was true, and it really wasn't true because, bitch, ain't nobody singing to you. You're not relevant like that, you know? Um, I've always, if you know Justin, you know I've always been a singing ass nigga. Like I love just 
harmonizing and, you know, when I hear good riffs on the radio and songs like that, I just, you know, I'm just very comedic and, you know, charismatic. And so around this time, and I'm, you know, I'm showing my age a little bit, but, you know, they had that feeling on your booty out you know, by R. Kelly and they had um, that anywhere for 112 that we can do it anywhere. And so in the library and things like this, you know, in times where I, I'll be singing these songs, like radio edit, of course, you know, I don't know, no, I ain't hearing the cussing, the, the full album version or nothing like that. So this is just the radio version and this was popping. And so she took that as, she put it in the statement, said, I'm singing these songs to her big head ass. I said, Lord, so I'm sitting off in here, you know, literally flabbergasted by the accusations that um, have been mounted against me by this fellow black person, you know? And um, these white folks, they ain't take it light on me at all. They uh, they looked to hang me, you know? They wanted me to fuck up out they school. So they um, not only did I get immediately suspended for 10 days, immediately, you know? Um, upon coming back, I had to go to a hearing. So I had to uh, basically go before a white man, like you would a, a judge, you know? And, you know, my daddy, he, he always been stand up. That's one thing, you know, about Pops. He ain't never let me go through nothing by myself. He just take all work, whatever he got to do, you know what I mean, to make sure I was, I was decent, you know. So shout out to Pops for that, for sure. Um, went up in there, you know, my Pops, he well-spoken just like me, uh, well, just like I am now. And uh, so it's just embarrassing. So they ended up, even after the hearing, they suspended me for another three days. Um, and on top of that, I had to go downtown and take sexual harassment classes with my with my pops. You know what I mean? So he's ridiculous, you know. And so the this whole thing, and I just remember the whole time, just thinking like, damn, how in the hell this happened? I couldn't wrap my mind around it because it's like, what reason did I give this woman to want to lie on me? You know, the one to go against me in the, in the fashion that she did, I just couldn't understand it at all. And so, you know, this led to a series of events, of course, once I finally was able to come back to school, you know, I was roasting the shit out this black ass bitch. You feel me? Like, you know, I'm walking around, hey, ho hey, hold on, let me keep my hands up. Let me make sure, goddamn, you, you understand, ain't nobody goddamn trying to touch your big head ass. You know what I mean? But, oh, every time I got a cross pass, with, oh, excuse me, hands up, you know what I mean? So I was just like, so just stop. And I went to Justin, stop. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna report you again, bitch. My God, you feel me? But anyways, these bitches is whack as hell, man. But that was the first time I was ever exposed to something of this magnitude. Like this is the first time that I experienced a scornful woman, a weird old woman, a bitter woman, and. At this age, woman, you had to get this from your mama or either these weak ass white women that you was that you had around you conspiring with you. You know what I mean? I don't, whatever the reason was to that, you know, why it occurred, I don't know. To this day, I don't know. But you know, part of me should if I if I see if I see this bitch to this day, I'm Deontay Wilder. To this day, you feel me? If I catch y'all, might spit in her motherfucking face. And if she got down, got a little partner or something with her, you feel me? My little husband or boyfriend, whatever, nigga, you're getting tried for sure. Nigga, for condoning faggotry, you feel me? This bitch is a punk. But, anyways, you know what I mean? Um, I just remember that that whole suspension, you feel me? And it's, uh, you know, on the radio that time that Usher was on there, that, uh, you got it, you got it, that. You know, it was radio back then, you feel me? So we used to all bumping that Power 98. And I remember that Usher getting ran like five times an hour, you know? But um, needless to say, it, it was what it was. And everything turned out for my, you know, for my good. But I learned a valuable lesson from this, you know, because prior to this, like I told y'all, every woman in my life truly loved me. So I had never, you know, for me to even see a woman in this light, it really just kind of changed the whole ball game for me. It went from me just being unsuspecting of women and just thinking it's all good and everything's sweet to Oh look, I got my I got my guard up on the on these women now. You dig? And so, um, needless to say, after this, because this was sixth grade, we ended up moving again. You know, we ended up moving up north. You know, this time up north, Charlotte. So we got there. We was by Cornelius Huntersville. You know, and so 
around this time, this one I'm going to Bradley in high school. I ended up going to North Mick for like a year or two. But um, I remember seventh and eighth grade, Justin was then us was scared to to mess with women. Like, and this is where you're really starting to come into your own sexually, you know. So I'm seeing kids on in the back, you know, on the bus, they enjoying they self, they niggas pulling dick out on, on bitches and shit, you feel me? Getting they dick jack in the back of the bus and you know what I'm saying, rubbing on titties and, and girls are starting to develop at this age now. So you feel me now seven, eighth grade, they walk around slight way stack, you know what I mean? So it's like damn, but I'm nervous. So it's slight way got me lame because I feel like every woman is garbage like this woman who just went out her way to lie on me. You know what I mean? And so um it really took a minute for me to get my bearings back right. You know, it really took me a second to even begin to trust women again. I had to start getting around um, you know, fly individuals who was really you know what I'm saying, who was having shouties. You know what I mean? I had to really get around that and really kind of peep what was going on and really kind of get comfortable in my spirit to hold on every woman not coming like this. But I say all that to say that when I heard the the Art of Dialogue interview earlier this week with Desiree Smith, which I played at the beginning, a clip at the beginning of this video, um, she was discussing how when Tupac was in jail, the, the circumstances surrounding him actually signing the deal with Suge Knight. Um, and she was speaking on how happy she was for him to get out of there because she knew the man prior to that. And then she saw him literally changing. She, you know, literally said that it was, it was turning him bitter. And I understood that, you know, I felt it when she said that because you know, it's one thing for you to be a garbage man with no character, with no type of, you know, substance about yourself, but I've always been a prideful man, like, and one who considers himself upper echelon. So for me to take anything from your big head ass is the best definition of offensive to me, you know? And, you know, everything uh, ended up working out, needless to say, because, you know, um, I really kind of needed that because it really kind of prepped me you know, for the game. I didn't jump in too early, you know. I kind of had to really kind of peek from the sideline, see what's going on. And by the time I did jump in the game, boy, and I started really doing my thing with women, yeah, I ain't looked back ever since, you know. But um, I say all that to say, I just wanted to come by, you know, and give a brief message to all of my brothers today and let y'all know that, you know, please utilize this game. Uh, stay out of that gray area. You know, in this particular case, uh, you know, it was just some fluke shit that happened to where, you know, I was just around. We was just a minority, and I guess she just, I don't know what the hell she was on. But oftentimes in life, um, and going into that gray area, let me give you this last story about these about these Ayanna Jackson ass bitches. So, I mean, you probably guessed it by this point. I, I didn't meet Ayanna Jackson specifically. I met a woman bearing the same spirit as Ayanna Jackson. Who just want to got? Who just want to be relevant? Might be under the spirit of embarrassment, whatever may have you, but it's just deflecting that on a on a black man, you know. Very demonic, very demonic spirit. But it ends up. Um, I had a cousin, you know. He's really he really not my blood cousin, but at the time I met my half sister when I was like nine, I met him also. So he really liked my brother, so to speak. You know, he stayed at my every weekend. Like he had my house. You know, a lot of my childhood experiences, damn near all of them is with is with him. You know, we used to wear the same clothes. Like, you know, like Honeycomb Brazier say, sure, I remember me and Daryl used to wear the same clothes. Like, I started getting big, like, he never wouldn't grow. You know what I mean? So it's like, it just was what it was, but he really my, my family, and I had a whole lot of love for him, you know? And so, one day, because we started, uh, you know, we graduated high school, and by this time, Justin, just in that nigga by this time, you know? And so, um, we ended up, I came down, I'm up in, I'm down in Greensboro now. I go to Raleigh for cuz birthday, just to support him, showing some love. Now my cousin, he always, he be around linebackers and I'm not even playing like, at all. Like anybody who know cool, like he gon', he bring him in there, like he come to family functions and family, you know, shit, like it's all good. He come in here with some like, 
bitches shaped like Brian Urlacher really coming in this mug. Like, if they get the swing on you, you're going to have to damn the square up with their ass. You know what I mean? And really get it busting. Like, God damn, girl, you big as hell. You know what I mean? Strong looking. You feel me? But at this time, he had a decent looking shawty. You feel me? God damn. But she just was a child. You know, she was just an out of pocket little child. You feel me? Cord. <laughs> Throwing temper tantrums and shit if she don't get her way. This type of little bullshit, you know? And so it ended up, uh, I come down there this time, you feel me? I bring my cousin, you know what I'm saying, a little bottle and shit, you feel me? We down there having a good little time. And uh, this is my second time down there because the first time, uh, one of his, one of the shoddy homegirls, she was fucking with me. She was the finest one up out that clique too, you know, <laughs> rightfully so. But ended up, you feel me, like we ain't fuck with shit. We, you know, we was in there getting it popping a little bit on that, on that couch, you feel me? Now mind you, just like 1920 at this time. So it's like shit, you know, we doing our thing. So when I came down there this year, he like, cause, you know, shot gonna be her, nigga, woo, woo, woo. You know what I'm saying? The one you were fucking with last time, shit, woo, woo. You playing like she gonna be down, so I'm like, all right, bet. So we come down here. You know, by this time, everybody gets, everybody down there drunk by this time, you feel me? You know, I don't really drink like that, so I'm just tipsy, you feel me? I like to smoke. And so, at that time, I did. And so, uh, it ended up, you know, the shawty ain't up, you feel me? But it's two other homegirls, you know what I mean? And so, this homegirl, the whole time, the whole night, she attention seeking, you feel me? Ain't paying no, no mind. It's something about not paying these women no mind, dog. She going out her way, shaking booty all on the couch. Ain't down there got no, ain't got no drawers on. She down there jumping on couches with one leg, throwing booty all in the L skirt, coming up and shit. You feel me? So just, this a loose bluesy ass bitch. Ain't nobody stunting you, girl, like at all. You know? And so we do all that shit. Goddamn boom, we head on back to the crib. And so shit, it, it like me, uh, another nigga in here, shit, shawty. And like a homegirl or something like that. You feel me? So we all in here. And my cousin, he going to uh he going the room and got down. So he and uh he got down, he fucking on his shawty. She and us screaming like she getting the best dick of her life. <laughs> I, I ain't hate no you could got that shit. Do your thing, you feel me? So she and oh my god, oh Lord. You know <laughs> it's so it ended up right, so I'm really on the couch sleep, but got this nigga. She doing all this animated ass shit, man. So then I wake up and got them bones. So I'm on the couch like this. You feel me? Head back, man. I wake up. The girl, she sleep in front of me like she got them snoring hard as hell, like calling Earl, like she oh. like Rick calling Hogs. Part not calling Earl. That's throwing up, but um. Yeah, she got there really just going ham. So, the fuck? So, mind you, she ain't got no drawers on. You hear me? And so, booty just up in the L. This booty just up in the L skirt. Slight weight down on it, but like right. Like, it could fly up over these cheeks any second. You know what I mean? So, my me being, you know, just a young nigga at that time, you feel me? I said, I felt it almost my duty to try this bitch. You feel me? So, I say, so not mind you, she's she's snoring loud as hell. So you know, just I start off both. You know what I'm saying? I tap on the leg. You know what I mean? I tap on the leg. I got to get the rubbing on a little bit, but just so it wasn't no confusion, I damn near shake this bitch. You feel me? Like so she she wake up. She you know what I'm saying? But she, she act like she's still asleep though. You know what I mean? She move ahead a little bit, but act like she's still asleep. But this snoring done stopped. So I know that she's fully alert, fully awake the whole nine. And so now, I'm still down here by the ankle. You feel me? By the ankle and the leg, you know what I'm saying? Little calf and shit. So now I get to moving on up. You feel me? Boom. Now, mind you, this is a young Justin now. It's a young Justin now. If you know anything about Justin once he got the game, baby, I'm I'm too prideful to even do that, baby. You ain't If you sitting down right now, Justin ain't finna try your ass. You better make a step towards me. You feel me? It might get denied. You dig? But it ended up. She, um, at this time, I was still on young nigga shit, so I got down bone. So, I am got down bone. I'm rubbing on this thigh now, you feel me? Down there caressing the fuck out this thigh, you feel me? She not saying nothing, Nathaniel. She's not saying nothing, you feel me? And no longer snoring. And so, it ends up, got down bone. So, I, I go up another notch, you feel me? Okay, boom, because this done been, you've been, I've been successful with these methods too many times. Before, you know what I mean? So it's like I'm starting to understand, like, damn, this is just kind of how it goes down. You dig? So I'm like, okay, damn, she, 
she ain't want to try me, but she want to let me hit this, though. You feel me? So I got down bones, so now I move on up. You know what I'm saying? Start, start touching on this booty. So I got down bone. Um, so I touch on this booty for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, hey, ju little juice get to running down his leg a little bit. So I'm like, okay, worry. So I got down bone. So once it's once she started getting wet, she she kind of she kind of get up, and then she just go to the couch and ball up on the couch. You know what I mean? Just ball up on the couch and and act like she going back to sleep. So I left it at that. I'm like, all right, bitch. You feel me? Right? Whatever. You know what I mean? So it was what it was. And um, so that morning we wake up. You feel me? But I've always been sensitive to the spirit. So again, I. I knew some some weird shit was finna go down. Like you feel me? She was finna goddamn try to throw a cross or make herself way more important than what the fuck she was. You know what I mean? And so it ended up she she leave out for me that morning. She going to uh, knock on the door. Like, hey girl, sounded like Ayanna Jackson, like that little bit. You know what I'm saying? Sounded stupid as hell. You remember at the beginning of the video? I, I was omnipresent outside of my body and boop boop boop. Like don't even know the words you're using. It's adjacent. Just throwing out shit. You feel me? So she got walk up with the same last spirit. You know? Yeah, girl. I'm gonna. I gotta tell you. I'm gonna talk to you. I'm gonna. I'll let you later. So I'm down there looking. I'm like, man, all right, worry, whatever. So then by this time, my cousin get up. You feel me? So me and the nigga dap up, nigga got down. My head on back to the burrow. Now by the time I get down to the uh, to the burrow, that nigga gonna text me talking about some cuz. Damn, cuz that man, you cuz you took that too far, man. Why you got damn do her like that? A bit like nigga, what? Did I like what? You feel me? And then, you know what I'm saying? It just ended up happening. It, it, it rubbed me the wrong way because, you know, I've always been one to. My cousin knew my character. He knew at this time, yeah, Lil Justin ain't messing. I ain't messing with nothing that ain't fine as hell. Cause I don't even be around these type bitches. You feel me? These little lame ass little shawties that you over here fucking with cuz I don't even get down like this. Stop playing with me. You know what I mean? So whatever the fuck she done told you, nigga, she got, okay, she got tried, but as soon as she got damn bone, got her ass up off the, you know what I mean? It was a wrap. You know what I mean? Like shit, ain't nobody got down doing nothing, taking up from this bitch. But you know, shit, it was what it was, man. And shit, you know, me and my cousin, we, that kind of drove a wedge through, you know, through our relationship to where goddamn, man, we ain't been able to get right to this day, man, you know, shit. After that, I was so offended by this shit, nigga. Don't goddamn talk to me, nigga. You know what I mean? Growing up eating food all in my house and shit, nigga, goddamn. Because there's only one or two things. Either you goddamn really under the influence of this whack ass or this weak ass bitch that you got, you know what I mean? And you goddamn just believe in whatever a bitch say, nigga, goddamn, which in my book make your ass a flat goofy. Or goddamn, you just hating on your cousin, nigga. You ain't even care to do no research or inquiry and you just want to negate my character and overwrite and overrule everything that you know about me and go with the word of this loose booty floozy either way son you're weak as hell you dig and got down shit it, it was what it was man but you know i say all that to say man to any brothers out here who have uh had similar experiences to these man uh for one two takeaways stay out that gray area you know what i mean stay out that gray area like what i what i would just say Great area, you know what I mean. So let's say even if a shot come to your crib for the first time, nigga, and she slight weight, you know what I mean. She in your bed, butt ass naked. You feel me? If it ain't really given to you, if there's any type of inclination that some funny shit could go on, or she that you do, you don't. You do, you don't. You do, you don't. Ain't all that type weirdo shit. Like you feel me? Like if it ain't the spirit ain't right, cause leave that, leave that alone immediately because especially in today's times this is back 10 15 years ago but in today's times where women is straight weird uh, lord forgive me a good number of women is uh are weirdos and they're operating under the spirit of you know of arrogance really so to speak man you gotta shy away from that because the first second you know embarrassment come or 
you know, uh, she want to make herself equivalent to you or just do some fuddy duddy ass shit, man. She can really just cause situations and in circumstances in your life to really just go left, man. That's giving this bitch way too much power, you dig? And so, man, shy away from them gray areas because I come here to tell you it's a um, an overwhelming population of women who would just, who will make a step towards you who are thirsty who are who willingly want to give you this pussy you ain't got to be nothing weird you ain't got to act like she <laughs> you know what i mean like she's some type of big ass bargaining chip i just don't know it <laughs> nigga hell nah let me tell you in 2022 shawty's is with the business they pulling up slanging that they break far in that pussy and they got uh, 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 they throwing that thing you dig what i'm saying so shit Ain't no need for no type weird shit, no type gray area type stuff, man. If this, if it ain't right, if it ain't, if it ain't abundantly clear that this woman is fucking with you like that, and she really trying to throw you this thing, man, then move the fuck on. I would even go so far as to say, shy away from the rough ass sex, man. You know what I mean? You can't give these shorties no light. These Ayanna Jackson ass bitches, no light, man. You feel me to go up in here, bite marks on that shit, bruises on that shit, you know. We not doing none of that. Some of y'all niggas so rough with the bitch, like, she, she look like she done got beat up. You feel me? Like, y'all y'all ain't doing nothing but in that fucking. She look like she done got beat the fuck down. You feel me? But shy away from that as well. Um, the gray areas, um, just all the way around. You know, and really just look to see the character of this woman that you're dealing with, you know. Um, oftentimes with me, that's... Uh, that's considered egregious. If I find out that you don't put the police in anybody business, any man business, you calling up, I'm not with the hood shit. You feel me? You're not finna be calling, uh, getting niggas arrested, goddamn, then combining niggas out and shit, bitch. You a dumbass. Like, get the, get your goofy ass on. Any nigga participating in these type of activities, nigga, you are a dumbass too. I remember the first time I got locked up, and it's the last story, and I'm gonna end this shit. But um, the first time I ever got locked up, nigga, it was a nigga in, in the in the holding cell with me, just a charismatic nigga, so I'm in there listening to him, you feel me, like, so he in there going crazy, you know what I mean, just hella funny, and so he in there telling me, nigga, I knew I was finna get violated today, nigga, ooh, ooh, ooh. hey, you see me, I got two pair of drawers on, man, two, you know what I'm saying, ooh, ooh, I already knew what time it was, man, got down, shot and caught me cheating, man, I knew she was finna violate me, and I'm in my head over here, you feel me, I'm a young nigga, but I'm like, the fuck, if she a shawty, why the hell is she? She putting them peoples on you. But, you know, I recall, you know, my pops, he already tell me shit like this. You feel me? Even in his job. Well, women getting mad at the boyfriends. Call, uh, calling the job up. Getting them fired. Having them drug test them. You feel me? And then only to support this man. Only to want to goddamn, you know, have the power structure come back in their direction to where they can take care of this man. And they, you know... Man, this shit really kind of sickening out here what be going on. But, you know, it's all in the game. And, uh, you know, my biggest thing is, uh, you know, that situation with Ayanna Jackson, it almost turned your boy bitter, man. You feel me? Because like I told you, remember prior to that, I, um, I thought every woman in the world was sweet. I thought they loved me. You know what I mean? I thought everything was good money with them. But um, I'm thankful to the game that um, it allowed me to see this side of women because it prepared me and it kept me out of um oh it well it kept me out of a lot of situations and circumstances that a lot of young men uh find themselves in you know it kind of protected me and it always kept that in the back of my mind moving forward throughout the course of life that no matter how beautiful no matter how attractive this woman is and the more i began to grow and the more the game began to deal with me you know i began to receive an, an abundance of revelation you know to where um you know, typically I know how to move at this particular point, man. But, you know, certain things you can you can never really account for. But the game is to be used as a shield. It's used or designed to protect you. And so, you know, um, yeah. You don't know, say um, you didn't receive any, uh, you haven't received any uh, fair warning. You know, warning comes before destruction. So I'm not sure who needed to hear this on today. But, uh, yeah, man, leave them Ayanna Jackson ass bitches alone, you feel me? And if uh, you have been a victim of this shit, you know, some shit like me or like Tupac has been through, man, don't let that shit turn you bitter, man, because, you know, uh, one, one, one woman doesn't represent the population of women. There's um, an overwhelming amount of uh, good, solid women out here, or women who have no desire to want to preside over a man or want to um, lock up 
a black man or you know just see them down bad There's some women who really desire and really love you know a man a black man at that you dig and so man just keep your eyes open for it but um you know with that i hope you definitely was able to get something from this um you know like always feel free to like subscribe uh, share the content, you know, uh, if you want to holler at me, man, you know, all the information is below. Subscribe to that IG, that Instagram, you know, uh, share, holler at me on email, send, just get sent for me if you guys really want to get at you, get at the kids, you know. And uh, before we close this thing out, like I said, you know, uh, we get we getting used to those tea breaks around this point. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and give you about five seconds. Go ahead and go ahead and do your thing. You feel me? Show you how pretty my teeth looking today. Yes, indeed, you know. And so, uh, yeah, with that, you know, everybody be blessed today.